Hi guys, in this video we're going to be going over uh, a physical science exam paper, past paper, uh, from Eastern Cape and it's for June 2018. Well, it's based on June 2018, so I'll post the link in the description um, to the to these past papers and where they're available so you can look at the original Eastern Cape paper and the memo and you can take a look at that and then I'll also post this paper that I'm using which is based on that paper. So in, in this in this first video we'll go through multiple choice and then we'll go through each question uh, systematically. Okay. So let's start off with this multiple choice. So you only choose one of each and each multiple choice counts for two marks. One point one a truck carrying seven hundred concrete seven hundred kg concrete blocks block near the back of its flatbed is travelling to the right along a straight travelling road. 25 meters per second so it's traveling right now 25 meters per second it stops immediately and the concrete block this concrete block here slides all the way here so what's the best example explanation to why the block slides this should be intuitive intuitive sorry you should know immediately that this is inertia so looking we're looking for something the multiple choice involving inertia uh, because inertia is the resistance of uh, an object to change its motion right um, so the only one is only one of these options involving inertia is B, and so the first answer is B. Okay, well, let's make this a little thicker. Okay, question two: Two different masses exert a force of F on each other when their distances are apart. What will be the force if the distance between them is halved? So um, we use this for, for Newton's uh, equation for gravitational force, basically. Um, so you know that usually it's F is equal to uh, G M1 M2 all over R squared. Okay, so that's F. And now what we're saying is the, f the distance between them is half. So we can say F is equal to G M1. So this is F nu is equal to G M1 M2 all over half the distance and that's still squared this is going to be equal to g m1 m2 over 1 over 4 r squared and if you just rearrange this you bring the 4 to the top or if you want to change it, it's going to be 4 g m1 m2 over r squared but this looks exactly like f so f nu is equal to 4 f and that's how you do these sort of questions so that the, the answer is obviously D. Okay, let's move on. The mass of an object Q is twice the mass of another object R. Both objects are released simultaneously from the same height. How does the velocity of R compare to the velocity of Q before they strike the ground? Ignore the effects of air resistance. So. You might be tempted to use F net equals to MA in this question, um, but that's not what we're looking at. We actually, in this case, we're looking at equations of motion. And if you look at the equations of motion, mass doesn't play an, a role in it, so mass is not important. I'm sure you've seen videos or you've seen, or in class, you must have covered it, with two objects, different masses, they fall down. Um, just say you have like a small rock here and a big boulder, they both, in the absence of air resistance, will reach the ground at the same time. So, therefore, how does the velocity of r compare to the velocity of q? They're the same. You use the equations of motion to determine that. Um, you can you can actually practically plug in some numbers, and you'll find that they have because the acceleration is same, the velocities will be the same. So it has equal velocity to q. Okay, let's move on. Which one of the following physical quantities represent the rate of change of momentum of an object? So rate of change. How would you determine rate of change? So we've got momentum so we've got change in momentum q over change in t that's what it means by rate of change that you should know simply it's going to be sorry not q but p sorry about that change in momentum p over change in time rate of change of momentum look in your formula sheet you'll see it's equal to f net so it's a net force quite straightforward okay next deals with the definition of elastic and inelastic uh, collisions Two objects experience an inelastic collision in a closed system. 
which one of the following combinations regarding the kinetic energy of momentum is correct. So we've got a whole bunch of momentum is conserved and not so for in, in any for in both collisions, what is the case? Momentum will always be conserved. So momentum is always conserved. So you know it can't be A, it can't be C. Now we need to know whether kinetic energy is conserved or not conserved. So it's inelastic, so we know that that kinetic energy will be not conserved, so it can't be that one. And then the answer is B. Cool. Let's move into this question. Now this is deals with the Doppler effect. As the sound source moves away from an, an observer, uh, the observer stationary, the frequency appears to decrease. If I have to draw this out, so we have, just say we have some vehicle here, let's say it's a police car. My amazing drawing, making some sound with the siren here. And we've got one guy chilling here. And as the sound source moves away from the observer, the frequency appears to decrease right so we're saying frequency goes down right now oh so everything here is dealing with wavelength or loudness don't worry about loudness now it's usually a, a trick question so don't worry about that so it's going to be dealing with wavelength so let's look at the proportionality so we know that wavelength since we're looking at we need to look at wavelength so that looks so ugly wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency so Frequency went down, that means wavelength must go up. Let's look for when wavelength increases. So that's incorrect because wavelength decreases. Wavelength between us increases, so it could be B. It doesn't remain unchanged. It has to be B. Quite simple. Okay, let's move on. Airbag. So you should know this already. Um, an airbag can protect a driver from serious injury during a collision because th as the contact time increases, what happens? This one's quite straightforward. It's the whole point of... of of an airbag, it's to reduce the amount of force on the person experiencing it. So, the contact time increase. If you look at our momentum equation above, our rate of change in momentum, you'll see that contact time increased, therefore, net force decreased. Remember from our formula, F net is equal to change in P, change in T. We've got increase in change in T, so that this number at the bottom gets bigger, that means the fraction itself gets smaller, that means F net goes down. So the net force decreases. Okay. Right. The siren of a stationary ambulance delivers sound waves of frequency 900 hertz. The ambulance moves in such a way that the wavelength of the sound of the listener increases. The frequency of the stationary listener here could possibly. So this deals with frequency again and Doppler effect. So what we're saying is, uh, so wavelength increases wavelength um, which is also lambda and wavelength increases what happens to the frequency right so if the, f if the wavelength increases that means frequency must decrease remember frequency is sorry inversely proportional to wavelength okay so that means if the frequency was 900 hertz and you say the wavelength increases, that means frequency must decrease. It must be less than 900 hertz. The only one can't be that, can't be that, can't be the only one. Has to be C. So it's quite straightforward. Okay. Okay, this deals with redshift and blue shift and that stuff. So you're just going to have to know this theory. Uh, there's nothing I can really teach you. You just have to understand this, and uh, the answer will be there, right? So astronomers obtain the following spectral lines of an element spectrum line in the lab and spectrum of element from a distant star from distant star this observation confirms that a the star is moving towards the earth the star is moving away from the earth the universe is enlarging enlarges the star undergoes no relative movement so we can see there's a slight shift here uh, in the red you can see it's, it's, you can see it's moving towards therefore the star is moving towards the earth the, the, this this is you're just going to have to understand just look up um, just go, go through your, your textbook in in definitions of, of blue shifts, red shifts, sorry, red shift is the more particular one. The universe is enlarging, yes, this, this, it could, this could also be the answer, but it could also be other, one of these two. It's, it's usually never going to be D, um, but it's it, it definitely one of these three. So you're just going to have to go through your textbook and, and, and just learn it off. Alright, last multiple choice question. An object is dropped to the ground with this from a certain height and bounces back to the same height. 
which one of the following velocity versus time graphs represents the motion of an object if downwards is taken as, as negative. Okay, so we're saying downwards is negative. Okay, and let's look at the question. Right, object is dropped from a certain height, so it starts at zero. So we know for sure it starts at zero. Downwards is negative, so it's going down. So it has to go. So it's, it's going down, down, down. So it's going more and more negative. It goes more and more negative, more and more negative, more and more until it stops there. It hits the ground at some point. Okay. Once it hits the ground, it starts flying. It goes back up, and it, at the ground, it has its max velocity. So let's let's just draw a picture here for you. Right. So it's dropped here. Initially, when it starts off, there's zero velocity. It goes down, and it has a maximum negative velocity here. Right. At this point here, when it's going back up, right, it must have a maximum velocity because the velocity over here is going to be zero again. Remember your projectile motion. So we know it's going to have a maximum positive velocity this time, so in an upward direction, positive again, and it's going to go all the way back to zero to stop again. And we look at the graphs, it has to be D, it's exactly the same. But yeah, so that's how you do the multiple choice questions. You just look at your formula sheet, analyze the question, read it very carefully and uh, that's how you do the multiple choice questions in the next video we'll go through the actual questions from the paper but that's about it thanks